right we have an object so you can read this thing here and so you can put that over there an object of 30 kilos is resting on a horizontal uh, surface if a person applies a force of 230 newtons to move this object calculate the following if mu s that's mu that's static friction the coefficient of status friction is 0 0.75 so we'll do a wee sketch here right here's our object and uh, here's our rough surface and then somebody comes along and pulls here right and they're pulling there with a force of 230 newtons so that's equal to the pulling force f sub p say right what else is going on well now we have to find with the uh, static friction or with the the object the mass of the object so the mass equals 30 kgs now let me get some uh, formula to do with this right formula c i have here earlier now put them down and then just shrink them a wee bit stick them up here in the corner these are from the exact back of the exam paper you see that's accelerating force pulling force resistant force and here we have friction force of friction is equal to mu times n where n is equal to m times g now n then for us is going to be m times g and our mass is 30 multiplied by g is 9.81 so that gives us n, the normal force. Uh, I've done this here earlier. 30 by 9.81 gives me 294.3 newtons. And uh, what's next? Uh, we're, we're looking for the normal reaction. Well, we've done that. That's part I done there. And next up, we're looking for the frictional force. Right, and our formula tells us that the frictional force F sub F C is equal to mu multiplied by N. And that's the mu S static friction, which is given to us as 0.75. And we multiply that by our normal uh, force, 294.3. And that comes out at 220.725 newtons. Now, going back to the diagram, I should have been a bit clearer. The weight will be acting down there, and that will be mg acting down, and the normal force acts up to prevent the box or object from pushing through the surface. That's the normal force acting that way. And the force of friction will be between the box and the ground, but it will be act acting this way. The force of friction will be against our pulling force. So, that's our frictional force, part 2 done. And now we're going to look at part three, the resultant acceleration force. Now here we go. This is the resultant acceleration force formula here. So one, two, three. AF resultant acceleration force equals the pulling force minus the resistance or frictional force. So that's simply equal to the pulling force we worked out. If we know we're given that. That's 230 newtons minus the resistant force we worked out at 220 newtons 0.75 and earlier one I prepared earlier I get the uh, 9.275 there for uh, the resultant acceleration force that there is the answer to part three. And part four then, I'm stuffing this in a bit here anyway, part four. We're going to use this classic one up here, F equals MA. Now we can just write MA equals F. It's handier for what we're going to do. Because we want the resultant acceleration. And we're going to use the resultant force here for F. So we have M times A equals our resultant force, or our resultant acceleration. What am I trying to say? We get A, we divide both sides by M, so we get A equals F over M, right? And our resultant force, the resultant acceleration force there was 9.275, so that goes on top. And underneath we have our mass of 30. So 9.275 divided by 30, 
and we get 0 0.309 to three decimal places and that's meters per second squared that's the resultant acceleration and that's 12 marks there for that so you could have paused that, you know, and tried it out, etc., in various stages, and try it again tomorrow, maybe. Okay.